Uh, well, LJ, what, uh, what have you guys been working on uh, since the K-State game? Um, a lot of defense, um, working on some of the zone defense. Uh, we tried to implement a new defense the last game. Like um, We tried it like the day before the game, then went out there and did it. So we um, worked on that a little bit. Um, just a lot of defense, you know. Yeah. That's the main, the main focus right now. Yeah, are y'all using like different kinds of man-to-man -to -man too? Just Scott yeah. said y'all use it. Yeah, we do use different types of man-to-man -man defense. Um, yeah, as y'all see, we throw in the zone defense here and there. Um, so I mean, that's really what we've been working on. Just tighten, tightening a couple things up. Um, anybody had confusion, uh, we addressed the confusions um, over the past few practices. So hopefully, it looks um, a little bit cleaner while we're out there. Yeah. Is that a lot of it, just communicating better and making sure you have the right guys and stuff? Yeah, um, just a lot of communication um, and just a lot of reps. Um, the more we rep it, um, the more comfortable guys are going to be um, when we switch up the defenses. And um, it becomes um, second nature of like where you're supposed to be at on the floor whenever we rep it. So we've just been doing a lot of repetition. John, what have you all been doing as far as trying to uh, maybe improve in the paint with the big guys and stuff? Um, a lot of it comes of com uh, communication, just be able to keep up big in the paint when we can. Um, the second part is also transition defense, just we're giving up layups because we don't get back in time. So uh, we try to be able to just meet the guys in the paint, make sure we're all on the same page to just stop giving up layups and stop giving up rotations. How are you feeling out there? Are you feeling like where you were? Or how, are you, how are you doing? Um, I'm OK. I feel OK. I feel like I'm getting better every game, uh, picking up different things every game, just still ramping up. John, uh, Jerome, Jerome Tate said he almost cried uh, when you were when you checked in for the first time in that Kansas State game. Did you hear anything from him? Did he say anything to you after the game? Uh, uh, he told me uh, when we shook our hands. Uh, when I shook his hands, he told me he was really proud of me. And yeah, um, he's a great man. At the end of the day, um, uh, he was here when I got in this program. Helped me a lot defensively and offensively, also in my confidence. I feel like he did. Um, got a really good pick up with him. So, and then LJ, as, as we kind of. Uh, Move on over to Texas. You know, a lot would have to happen for you guys to win that, that Big 12 regular season title. But Texas, you know, are you guys trying to play spoiler for them, kind of get revenge for what happened in Austin? Um, of course, we're trying to get revenge. Um, I mean, I don't know how um, or what has to happen for us to, to win the conference. So um, I wouldn't say it's more of stopping them from winning the the conference because at the end of the day we only care about us like we want to win the conference um if it's not us it doesn't matter who it is who wins but um we just taking it one game at a time of course we want to win but our main objective isn't to stop them from winning it because i mean we can only do so much we can only win this game and if they end up winning after then they win after but um our goal is just to win win out that's it oj uh march is almost here <laughs> Is that kind of the goal to be playing at a peak when you get to March? Oh, uh, for sure. I think that's everyone's goal, though. Um, be playing at a peak there in March. Um, I mean, like like I said, we just got to tighten um, a few things up, and hopefully, we're playing our best basketball around that time. And um, who knows what what can happen there in March? Kind of going along with that, how big of a game is a game like this one coming up uh, in order to kind of get you guys on the track that you need? Um, this is a big game, um, especially for confidence. Um, uh, I think they're what they're top ten, right? Um, so top ten matchup. Uh, no, no, no game in the Big Twelve is easy. So these next few games are very important. Um, it's just helping us be battle tested for um, the road ahead. So um, we just got to lock in and get it done. Uh, let's take a set last game was about a few weeks ago. Anyway. What do you feel like you guys got to maybe? I mean, that game went to the wire. What do y'all got to do maybe against them to kind of get over the top? Um, I feel like we have to rebound a little bit better. Um, uh, I haven't really watched the full game lately. Um, but, I mean, we just got to get back in transition, first of all. 
Um, we got to stop people from getting a lot of points at, at the rim. Um, that's one of our um, struggles this season. A lot of teams get to the paint easy and score on us, rather than second chance points or straight line drives. So just got to eliminate those and transi transition buckets. I feel like um, every team in the Big 12 that's beat us so far, they've took advantage of those three areas. So we just got to um, do better in those three aspects. John, you had a double-double the last game. Was that a significant thing for you since you have, you've only been back not very long, but uh, you know you played enough minutes and you were able to get a double-double? Mm, to be honest with you, it really was not because uh, at the end of the day it was a loss and stats really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm really trying to help my team win, and whether it's 20 rebound or one rebound, as long as we get the win, I'm fine. So. Uh, this will be your first time to play Texas. Uh, I mean, is it kind of a, a learning curve for you since you hadn't played, played them before? Is it a little extra study for you? Uh, not really. I feel like the Big 12 is a pretty whole league, and everybody know everybody. And I've been in the league for the past three years, even though I haven't played the whole season last year. We know them, they know us, they know our plays, we know our play, uh, we know their plays. It's all about who's gonna play harder, who's gonna execute better, who's gonna make sure that they run uh, whatever they're running better. So in defensively and be able to get back on a transition is really what it's gonna be about. Yes. Thanks guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we 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 we've we've uh, uh, we had a good practice today. Good practice yesterday. Um, happy to get out of Kansas. Happy to be back home. Um, excited to see how we can improve, get better. Uh, we did a couple good things up there. For both of the first halves. Um, second half's not good enough, and hopefully we can put forty minutes together at home. Uh, I guess the, you, you said you tried four different defenses against Kansas. State. Yeah. Are you just looking for something that? Works best? Is that yeah, we, 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 we haven't been great defensively. And uh, sometimes if you don't have a good fastball, you try a curve, knuckle or slide or whatever um, to keep people off bounds. Most teams in this league have two or three defenses they're going to use during the course of the game for possession or here after a timeout. Um, but um, at the end of the day, uh, 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 it's really hard to win on the road. And uh, the home crowds are just tremendous in the Big 12. And hopefully we can feed off our Big 12 uh, fans at uh, the Farrell Center and the energy we get uh, that give us a, a great 40 minutes performance. And um, defense is so much a uh, heart, desire, effort, energy, passion. And, and you feed off your crowd with that, too. Uh, like what, what's got improved defensively? Uh, a couple of guys mentioned yeah. Well, tra transition defense, and, and uh, that's twofold. One, it's uh, um, if we take bad shots, we turn it over, that's going to give you transition defense. So the better, we've been pretty good with turnovers. Um, shot selection, uh, you're always working on, but hopefully we continue to get better at that. And then the second thing is is um, we do shoot a lot of threes. That's a lot of long rebounds and uh, puts you back in transition. we got to do a good job matching up, getting back. Uh, and if, if you handle the transition part, well, now you got to guard your man and you got to keep him out of, uh, of the paint. We've given up too many buckets at the rim. That's on ball defense, and then that's your rotations. So, um, in a nutshell, uh, when you're playing against the best teams in the country, they're going to have good offenses, they're going to have good players. And uh, a couple points here or there usually separate you offensively and defensively, and uh, we'll try to continue to chop away at that. At home, um, we've been better, and on the road, we got to be better. Is there anything you put your hand on or finger on in terms of second half? Is, that, is there any constant in that, or is it just? Well, I think I think if you take a step back. I mean, Kansas lost, what, three home games in like 20 years in the Big 12? I don't know what it is. So it's hard to do. Um, second thing is K-State's lost one game at home all year. So, I mean, there's a reason that they win a lot of games. They got great crowds, great energy. They got great players, good coaches. So you have to do everything right. And with us, I thought K-State, we did look tired. I thought second half against Kansas, it just snowballed on us. Um, Coaching-wise, um, there's some things we'll try to do different. Um, 
that, that maybe help with both those situations. But I tell you, the thing that helps the most is playing at home in front of your home crowd. Um, and we got to protect our home crowd, our home court. We got to give our crowd a lot to get involved with and cheer about. Um, I know it was a big difference when we went to Texas this year. Their new facility was a huge difference for them. And that's why they've been so much better at home. So um, hopefully tomorrow we have a great turnout and hopefully we play well to give a lot of uh, opportunities for our crowd to interject and motivate and uh, help affect the game. When you guys went to the Lewis Center, uh, the Colts were hit one at, at one point in that game and just couldn't close it out in the late stage. What do you think you got to do this time around to make sure you guys pull that out? Well, I think uh, uh, we're a different team. They're a different team uh, playing some different guys. I mean, John wasn't in the game then. Um, uh, but at the same time, uh, a lot of Big 12 games come down to one or two possessions. And uh, I think as a coach, you try to control what you can control. If we get a good shot, the right shot, might go in 50% of the time, might not. You can live with that. If you don't get the right shot, you don't get the, the good attempt, then then it's tougher because not only probably only making it 20 or 30%, you're probably putting them in transition. So I think uh, uh, shot selection is critical. Um, and with us, uh, we have really good uh, uh, shooters. We got really good scores, and uh, uh, if we get them good shots and they're patient enough to wait to get those shots, their percentages are usually pretty good, and our offensive rebounding is pretty good. Uh, and then defensively, um, we keep people out of transition. We guard in the half court. We do a better job on defensive boards, and we can get out in transition and score more. So it all kind of works together. There's ebbs and flows, um, but I mean. Texas is a, a top five team for a reason. Uh, they got some really good players. They're really well coached. And uh, uh, we got to do everything we can do to put ourselves in position to be successful. And how big is that, is that playing a number of uh, top five team, especially as you're kind of near the end of this season here and try to get close? Well, we, we've played the number two ranked schedule out of 363 schools. So, like, you go in and you put a schedule together, and for it to actually be the second toughest really – tells you how hard that is because you never know for sure people are going to have good years because injuries affect people, chemistry. I mean, North Carolina was the number one ranked team. And if you were to schedule that game, it wouldn't have been in, 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 as good for you as playing Gonzaga, you know. So, um, I mean, we've we played some really good teams, UCLA, Virginia, teams that are going to win their leagues and uh, 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 be high seeds in the tournament. And uh, um, at the same time, uh, playing in, in the Big 12, every game is a quad one game, basically. So uh, you have yourself a lot of great opportunities. Um, the tough thing is uh, winning is, is really enjoyable. Losing is not fun for anybody. And losing two in a row, we want to get that feeling out of our mouths. And um, uh, there's nothing better than get a home win uh, uh, to change that. But at the same time, I know Texas uh, 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 as well as every other team in the Big 12 doesn't like losing either. That's why we're all good. Scott, with the defensive adjustments, um, sometimes there can be trade-offs with uh, the other moving forward with yeah. guards making lineups or whatnot. How tough do those decisions get knowing that there might be a trade-off? Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, coaches control playing time. And uh, when when you're winning 10 out of 11, you keep doing what you're doing. If you lose, you tend to change things up or try to change offense, defense, whatever you need to to be successful. So, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna keep adjusting and uh, uh, try to put ourselves in the best position to be ready to finish the season. Because the goal of everyone in the beginning of the year is to to win a national championship or get to a Final Four. So, um, those trophies aren't handed out in February. A lot of experience, um, talented players that have been in college four, five, six years, um, and uh, guys that have uh, uh, played in big games before. They're not rattled by big, big, big moments. And I mean, uh, uh, at the end of the day, I think probably the biggest trend in college basketball, whoever has the oldest, most experienced team has probably had the best years. And I think we've all kind of learned that with COVID now.
Yeah, R Rodney and his staff have done a great job. And, uh, um, I mean, Coach Beard did a great job putting the staff together, the team together, and those guys uh, are to be commended for what they've done this year, um, keeping them together and keep them improving. And, uh, again, it's a lot of players that went there last year with the intention to be in the NBA, and they all came back. So that means their, their program has done a lot of great things, and those guys have all improved as players. No question. Yeah, they they. Uh, um, uh, sorry, I'm choking. I ain't got water up here either. <laughs> yeah, they got they got. W one of the great things about a deep bench is um, a lot of people have talent on their bench. They have talent and experience on their bench. So, I mean, very similar to us. When when you bring in someone like Jonathan Chamuachachua, you're bringing in a guy that's played in the biggest of big moments. So not only are they talented but they also have the experience when they get in the game that there's no moment too big for them. Um, Texas has a lot of that.